Hey, it's Tom June. During a recent trip away, I was fortunate enough to visit a place I've wanted to explore for quite some time. And given this is a UK space news channel, I thought I'd take some time to show some images that I took, as well as tell a little history about one of the most famous places in the UK. And that, of course, is Jodrell Bank. Lying about 20 miles south of Manchester, Jodrell Bank is of course home to the world famous Lovell Telescope, a radio telescope that is some 250 feet in diameter. Envisaged by Sir Bernard Lovell and constructed in the 1950s, this was once the largest radio telescope anywhere in the world. In fact, it's still in the top three of the fully steerable kind, sitting only behind Green Bank in the US and Effelsberg in Germany. In 1945, Bernard Lovell drove himself to the then remote site of Jodrell Bank, a piece of land owned by the University of Manchester, and experimented with using radar to study cosmic rays in the Earth's atmosphere. These experiments yielded less than favourable results. However, Bernard Lovell accidentally stumbled upon something else that would push him to take the next step, and that something was that he detected meteors. This would breathe a whole new life into his research, and he decided to take things a step further by building and constructing a radio telescope of his own. Over the next few years, Bernard Lovell and a team of scientists fashioned their own equipment from army surplus and used it to study radio waves in space. In 1947, they built the transit telescope from wire mesh, resulting in a 218 diameter radio telescope. It was crude by today's standards, but this telescope was able to detect radio waves from the Andromeda galaxy, some two and a half million light years away. With a sense of achievement in the bag and even greater ambitions in mind, Bernard Lovell met with engineer Charles Husband, and together they began to design a fully steerable radio telescope, capable of being pointed anywhere in the sky. Construction of the Mark I began in 1952, but became mired in trouble from the get-go. Costs spiralled out of control, and the telescope had to be redesigned several times to meet new requirements as science and engineering pushed new boundaries following the end of World War II and as the space age came into being. The telescope itself was constructed from steel and used two 15-inch turret drives from two World War I battleships that had been broken up. These became the main gears that drive the pitch of the telescope, and the whole telescope itself sits on a railway track, ensuring that it is indeed fully steerable. By 1957, the Mark I was nearing completion, with Bernard Lovell himself having had one foot over the abyss at some points along the way. The project was hugely in debt, and voices from all sides were seriously questioning whether to see the project through to completion. However, in October 1957, the Soviet Union launched the world's first man-made satellite, Sputnik 1. Armed with prior knowledge of this launch, Bernard Lovell realised that his telescope was perhaps the only radio telescope in the world that was capable of detecting not only the launch, but also the satellite itself, if it successfully deployed. This pushed the project to completion, and it was soon fully operational, successfully tracking the launch and the satellite itself, confirming successful deployment, producing front page headlines across the world, and even earning Bernard Lovell and his team a letter of thanks from the USSR. The next decade proved to be even more fruitful for the Mark I, becoming the first telescope to receive the first images of the moon, sent by Russia's Luna 9, and later assisted in the tracking of Apollo 11's historic lunar landing. It was also used during this Cold War era to track any incoming threat from the Soviet Union, being permanently pointed eastwards during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Aside from these larger, more public space programs, it also successfully engaged in scientific studies during this time. It became the first telescope to accurately measure the distance between the Moon and Venus. It detected pulsars, quasars, and the first ever detection of an Einstein ring. The telescope saw several upgrades as new technologies emerged, including the replacement of the steel bowl, the addition of upgraded tracks, new supports, an upgraded antenna, and a whole new computer system which could be fully programmable. Continuous upgrades were added so that the telescope could be refined for its multi-purpose use, and during this time it was also renamed the Lovell Telescope as other, smaller dishes were added to the Jodrell Bank site, including the 25-metre Mark II Telescope. 
Completed in 1964, the Mark II became the first telescope in the world to be controlled by a digital computer. George Obank is also now home to the Merlin Array, a series of interlinked radio telescopes spread across the UK. It's also the HQ for the International Square Kilometre Array, which is based down in Australia. One of the best things at the site, aside from the amazing Lovell Telescope, is the amount of visitor facilities there actually are. The first light pavilion, completed only in 2022, is the same diameter as the Lovell Telescope and houses an array of historical artefacts and exhibitions, all of which are interactive, and I have to say it's one of the best museum experiences I've ever had. Displays are projected onto recovered sections of the original Lovell dish, and that is an absolute treat to see. There's also an auditorium, science exhibitions, outdoor exhibits, and a whole lot more. Of course, in the UK, you might be familiar with Jodro Bank without even realising it, as it was home to the BBC's Stargazing Live programme, hosted by Dara O'Brien and Professor Brian Cox. They also hold regular science and music festivals at the site, all the while continuing to push the boundaries of scientific exploration. So there you have it, just a little history of this world famous site. In fact, it is grade one heritage listed in the UK and is an international UNESCO world heritage site. If you've not been to Jodro Bank before, I would highly recommend doing so. It really is well worth the trip. There's plenty for the whole family to do, including planetarium shows and guided talks, so much more. As you could tell from some of the images and videos that I captured, it really is well worth every single minute, and my kids absolutely loved it too. I've been Tom June, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.